So we've talked so far about um, heat transfer processes, you know, heat moving from the, the metal or block something to the water, water to something else. You know, we talk about endo and exothermic, but we've never talked about chemical reactions so far. And chemical reactions, you have to remember, are really specific when it comes to their, their energy release because it's about breaking and forming chemical bonds. And those... Um, there's got to be a net amount of energy. So we, we've been ignoring that so far when we looked at chemical reactions. We basically just looked at chemical reactions as, you know, reactants, products, does it happen? Great, it does. We never looked at how much energy has to be put in or actually comes out of the chemical reaction as we're doing it. So let's take a look at those now. So when you talk about chemical reactions and you talk about heat, you have to change your terms from heat to enthalpy. So enthalpy, which is abbreviated with a capital H, is the heat formed by a chemical reaction. Now, again, heat is a... Um, a misconception in our world because when we think heat we think hot and this doesn't always mean fire and the term formed also doesn't also mean heat released so they tend to talk about heat in one direction and um, they don't necessarily mean like formed as in they can actually form negative energy and form positive energy so you will I'll show you how to I differentiate between the two things when you in a second. So just like Q before heat will either be listed as joules or kilojoules KJ so meaning a thousand joules you have to be very specific when you're looking at this to make sure that you're talking about whether, whether you're talking about joules or kilojoules. So when you see the delta H, just like delta T, the delta, the triangle, stands for change. So this is going to be the change in enthalpy, and that's primarily what we're going to be looking at is not the enthalpy of one particular chemical, but actually the change in enthalpy over a course of a chemical reaction. So the way they use to calculate this, now I'm actually not going to give you this to have to calculate, but I wanted to make sure you knew where it from, came from, would be the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of the reactants. Uh, and that will give you the overall enthalpy for the chemical reaction. So, and this, this little piece right here means sum. Okay, so any of you in the advanced math classes will know that the, the sigma that's there actually means sum. So it's the sum of the heats of the products minus the sum of the heats of the reactions. Just like everything else, always remember all of these things will always be final minus initial when you're doing this. Okay, so the last thing minus the first thing. So yes, you can identify whether or not something is going to be heat, losing heat or gaining heat based on this because sign again is still very important. So let's look at the following example. It says consider the following reaction. 2N2 gas plus O2 gas yields 2N2O gas. And it tells me that the delta H for the reaction is positive 163.2 kilojoules and asks that the chemical reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So um, let's go think about what we just saw on the other slide. So I know that the delta H for an overall chemical reaction, remember Rxn is reaction, is equal to the heat of the products minus the heat of the reactants. Okay? And I know that in this case, my delta H is a positive number. Okay, so the only way for that to have occurred means is to get an overall positive reaction must mean that my products must have a higher H than my reactants do. Because if you think about it, if you take a big number and you subtract a small number, you get a positive number. Okay? Uh, it's straight up math. If my reactants were higher than my products, that means that this would be a small number, and this would be a big number, and that would give me a negative number. Okay? So you're like, okay, great. So he proved where he got his positive number from. So what? Well, if you think about it, if my products have a greater amount of heat than my reactants, that must mean that heat went in. Because if I had 1 to start and 10 when I ended, that means heat was gained by the process, which means if heat went in, this must be an endothermic process. Okay? If heat comes out, that means my products have to have less heat than my reactants, and so this would be a negative delta H would give me an exothermic. Now, so in this case, I have a positive delta H. Therefore, the answer to this question is endothermic. Okay? So remember, if delta H, this is something you want to write down. If delta H is positive, that's an arrow. If delta H is positive, you have an endothermic reaction. If delta H is negative, you have an exothermic reaction, okay? So if delta H is positive, that means heat was gained. If delta H is negative, that means heat was lost. Now let's move on to letter B. 
So same same process, same chemical reaction. It says calculate the amount of heat transferred when 25 grams of N2O forms by this reaction at constant pressure. Okay, well, here's the thing about this reaction. This delta H is actually a ratio to the number of moles that are in the chemical reaction. Because chemical reactions are always based in number of moles. So you're like, OK, Mr. Siegel, but where do I get the number of moles from to find for the delta H? Well, it's actually already in the chemical reaction. So since we're talking about N2O, here are my moles, 2. So this 163.2, positive, important. I know just because it's a positive number, a lot of you are going to want to leave that positive off. That positive is important. Please make sure you put it on there. So that positive 163 actually comes out of 2 moles of N2O when the N2O is formed. So using that, I can actually set up a ratio for this problem. So it tells me 25 grams of N2O forms. Well, it says basically if 163.2 is needed to form 2 moles, how much heat, x, is needed when this many moles react? And you're like, wait, where'd the moles go? Well, it comes from the 25 grams. So we're going to do a simple mole conversion. Told you that moles in stoichiometry were not going away. I'm going to do a quick mole conversion. So my, I'm going to convert 25 grams of N2O to moles. So nitrogen is 14. I've got two of them. That's 28. Plus my 16 gives me 44.02 grams. I'm going to whip out my handy dandy calculator. And I'll plug this cu calculation into my calculator. So I've got 25 divided by 44.02. And I get 0.568. So this number is going to come up here. Okay, Now it's a ratio. I cross multiply. So I multiply these two numbers together, multiply these two things together, and I solve. So I jump back to my calculator. I take my 0.568, which is already there, times 163.2, and I divide it by 2. And I get 46.3. So x is equal to 46.3 kilojoules, K, capital J. Now, how do I know it's kilojoules? Simple. I just look up here. And whatever unit is up there is the unit that goes down there. I don't have to think about it at all. I literally just look at the problem and do it. OK, so notice that. And make sure you mark this down next to this problem. Enthalpies are based on moles. You must know moles in order to find enthalpies. Okay, Keep that in mind. Very important all the way through this whole unit about the moles and enthalpy. Let's continue with this problem. Let's try a, a slightly different version. So it says, how many grams of nitrogen gas must react in order to produce an enthalpy change of 5 kilojoules? OK, so it does not matter if I change substances, because the 163.2 is based on the balanced chemical equation. So before, I was dealing with N2O, but now I'm dealing with just nitrogen, which is N2. So my ratio is actually going to set up to be exactly the same. Now this time it says, how many grams of nitrogen must react to produce an enthalpy change of 5 kilojoules? So it tells me that the enthalpy change is 500 zero, zero kilojoules. So obviously, obviously here, I am going to solve for moles. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I cross multiply, and I'm going to solve. So I take my 5, I multiply by 2, which is obviously 10. I'm going to divide by the 163.2. So I take 10 divided by 163.2, and I get 0 0.0613. And that's going to be moles of N2. So nitrogen is diatomic. Okay, I know that because, one, I know my seven diatomics. But also, two, I just basically look up here, and I notice that there's a 2 in the as the subscript in the reaction. So now it's in moles. The question asks for? grams, so I have to do my mole conversion. Since moles are up here, one mole 
has to go on the bottom to cancel out, and the weight of two nitrogens go on the top. Jump back to my calculator, number's already there, go times 28.02, and I get 1.72. Of nitrogen are necessary for the five grams. Okay? And that's that. Now, why am I rounding to three decimal places? I'm rounding to three decimal places because there's only, I'm sorry, the three digits because there are only three significant figures in the problem. One, two, three. Remember, you always go by the smallest number of sig figs and you always go by the given. So this 163.2 is not a given, so I don't use it as part of my sig figs. Plus, you always go with the smallest. This one has four. This one has, um, 163.2 has four, but five has only three. So therefore, I would round it to three digits. Notice three digits, not three decimal places. So it's not like, you know, it's one, two, three, and I start like 0.721, I'm done. I have to round it to three, decimal, uh, three total digits, okay? Again, I'll keep practicing this all the way till the final exam. One last example, another little twist. I just like to throw you twists sometimes. Okay, so now it says, how many kilojoules of heat are produced when 10 grams of N2O is decomposed into N2 and O2 at constant pressure? So when you first look at this, you're like, okay, isn't this exactly like B? Well, it is and it isn't. We're still using N2O like we did in B, but there's this thing that happened here. They said decomposed. Now, why would they have said decomposed? Well, decomposition reaction is when one thing breaks down into a whole bunch of stuff. But that's not what's going on in this chemical reaction. This chemical reaction is a composition reaction because it's a bunch of stuff combining together to form one thing. So what they're telling me is, in actuality, I have to flip this chemical reaction. Now, this is a decomposition reaction. But here's the thing. My enthalpy is going to change because if it's endothermic in one direction, meaning heat goes in in one direction, well, if heat's going in in one direction, heat must be coming out if it's going in the opposite direction. Okay, so make a star, put this in the margins. You ready? When you flip a reaction, you flip the sign of delta H. Okay? When you flip a reaction, you flip the sign of delta H. So my delta H was positive before, now it's going to be negative. Now the problem doesn't change, it's exactly like what I did before. I set up my ratio, I divided by the coefficient for the N2O because that's what it looks it gives me, so it's 2 moles of N2O. And it says how much heat, so I'm solving for X, and I need to have the moles of N2O that goes on the bottom. So they tell me that there are 10 grams of N2O. So therefore, I put one mole on the top. And again, I go back to my 44.02 grams of N2O on the bottom. I go back to my calculator. So 0.227 moles, cross multiply, now notice the negative button is down here in the corner where the answer button is, make sure you use that because it, the negative sign is important, I divide by 2 and I get negative 18.5. because it does ask for kilojoules in the end. And that's my answer. So notice that, again, the reaction flipped, and the sign is now negative.